Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Ben, and this is part two to my particles tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you about emitters. Now, the thing is, in the if you didn't watch the last tutorial, you better go watch that one because I'm going to be building on some of the things that we used in the last one. I'll do a quick review, but I'm not going to explain it in detail. So in the last one, what we talked about was we talked about particle systems, which are where particles live inside of the game. And then we also talked about each individual, individual particle type, which just allows you to create different kinds of particles, like maybe you have a blood particle or a fire particle. So in this tutorial, we're going to go over particle emitters, and we're also going to create snow particles. So let's jump right into it. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into our... Uh, particle system object, you'll notice that I deleted the click event that we had in that old one, so that doesn't really matter, but the first thing we're going to want to do is actually I lied. So we're going to create a script and we're going to call this script part snow in it. So we're just going to initialize a snow particle and Oops, copy and code that I don't want yet. So inside of the snow particle, um, <clears throat> we're going to have this code. So we're going to create our particle global.pt snow equals part type create. So we're going to create our particle and assign it to a global variable. Now we're going to do var pt equals global dot pt snow. Now if you don't have GameMaker Studio, you can't do this. You'll actually have to type global dot pt snow out for every single thing down here when we're initializing this particle. But if you do have Studio, you can do this. So let's do a part type shape pt. See, if you were if you don't have Studio, you would type global dot pt instead of just our global dot pt snow instead of just pt right here. So let's see pt. Okay, so the first one is the type, and that's just pt. The second one is the shape, so it's pt shape snow. How convenient, right? There's a snow shape built into Game Maker that we can use, and it doesn't look too bad, so we'll use that one. And I don't know why I keep putting t's in my shape there. Let's do a part type size pt point two point five zero and zero part type color uh, pt c white. So if you don't know what I'm doing here, go look at the last video. It explains it a little bit better. I'm just setting different. I guess settings for this particle. So let's do part type color. Oops, did that one already. Uh, speed pt uh, 2300 part type direction pt 270 because we want snow to go down uh, 270. And we're going to give it a little bit of a wiggle. That's the 60 there. Now we're going to do part type uh, life. And we're just going to make this one last 300 steps. Just to make sure it has time to get off the screen before it destroys itself. Now I've got an error here because this needs to be part type color 1. And let's see. We'll comment these. Create the particle variable. And this one right down here is set the settings for the snow particle. Awesome. So we've got that part. Uh, OK, so inside of our object now, we are going to initialize this, vari this snow variable. We'll do script. Part uh, snow in it. 
So that initializes it. And inside of our game end event, we're going to want to also destroy this particle type because we don't want a memory leak. Destroy global dot pt snow. Great. That is perfect. So we've created another particle type, but you guys already knew how to do that. All I basically did was, you know, put some different settings into that particle type. But now we're going to create what's called an emitter because what we did last time wouldn't really work in this case. So inside of our create event, we're going to create a new variable. We're going to call it em for emitter. And we're going to do equals and um, it's em equals part emitter create. Now, the only thing that we pass into this is the particle system that this emitter lives in. So global.ps. So we're passing it into that particle system. So we've created our emitter. Now we need to do the settings for our emitter. And I'm actually going to do, um, because this emitter isn't going to move, we can do that setting in the create event. If you have an emitter that follows an object, then you would not be able to do this because you'd want it to update every step. But this one, it doesn't really matter. We can just do it in the create event. So we'll do part emitter region. Um, and we'll do global.ps, because that's the particle system. And then it's asking for the ID. And that's just our emitter variable that we created. Then it's asking for the x min. So we're going to do 0. The x max is going to be the room width. The y min is going to be negative 16. I'm just throwing that out there because it's above the screen. And the y max will be 0. The shape is going to be P, uh, uh, ps shape. And I'm just going to do rectangle. You saw that there were other shapes there that you could choose from. And the distribution is going to be ps distribution. Um, linear. So that will distribute the particles fairly evenly throughout this rectangle. So we've created our particle emitter region, right? Because basically all this does is it says across the top of the room, right? From the zero position in the x to the room width, which is the whole width of the room, and then just, you know, negative 16 and zero, which will just be barely off the screen. So it'll just create them off the screen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a step event. And inside of the step event, we're going to actually create the particles inside of the emitter that we just created. So we're going to do part emitter um, stream. And we're going to do global dot particle system because that's what we have, our emitter variable. Our part type is global dot uh, pt snow and then the number I'm just gonna do one I wonder if you can do like a lower value than one I'm gonna try 0.5 actually and just see what happens I've never tried that create half a particle right so let's actually that should be all if I can actually create half of a particle like that or not necessarily half of a particle but create them half as slow so global Oh, I forgot to put a, uh, I forgot to put a dot in that right there. So don't do what I did. Remember to put the dot right there before the global, right after, I mean. So what this will do, and you'll see it demonstrated in this, is that it doesn't do anything because apparently you can't do 0.5. So... My experiment failed, and you can all laugh at me if you already knew that that wasn't going to work. So, but let's, hey, it's worth a try, right? Sometimes it's fun just to try stuff, especially with particles. One of the funnest things to do with particles is just mess around with them. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. You can see the snow falling, and it's quite a bit of snow. This is a very heavy snowfall, but 
Yeah, so that's what an emitter does. We created an emitter that goes all the way across the top of the screen. So now you've learned everything you need to know about particles. Now you can go and mess around with them. I'm going to do more tutorials though to show you some cool tricks that you can do with them. But you've got the basics down. You know what a particle system is. You know what a particle type is and you know what a particle emitter is and how to control those. So just remember that I usually prefer to create particle systems as a global variable. That way every single object in my room can use that particle system. Same with particle types. I usually create those as global variables. But particle emitters are rarely global variables. They are usually local to the object that is uses, using them. So you know each enemy ha is going to have its own emitter because they're going to have their own place where their blood comes from or whatever. So each one is going to be local. That's why this emitter variable here doesn't have the global name on it. So I hope that helped you and I hope this snow tutorial, maybe you're building a snowman game or maybe you have a snow biome in your game or whatever. I hope this helped out and thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you guys later.